There we go. By the way, before we begin this, am I coming out all right? Like, if I talk a little louder than usual, like if I'm laughing at something you're saying or something, it doesn't sound like there's any feedback or anything? Oh, no, you sound pretty good, actually. Okay, it's not blowing out the mic at all? Oh, no, it's sounding great. Okay. Great. All right. I'm going to go pet the cat in celebration. Yeah. Oh, that's something I should do. <laughs> What's that? Share the screen. You could, but that would mean I look I look at the horrible video game with you. <laughs> uh. Punch Club has actually been doing all right on the channel so far. Either that or people are just finally warming up to our style. I welcome both. Like, because I'd say that's probably the hardest hurdle for anyone to just overcome to you know see these new see these new yahoos and get used to them not being the usual cup of tea I'm actually gonna restore a little of my energy before we get the day started oh okay start day well, 41 and Go welcome to... back everybody on punch club club 2 the club for vengeance we're not starting yet oh sorry well, there goes that. There goes that intro. <laughs> Do you want to start here? I mean, we can. Nope. Nope. Well, too bad. We're doing it ever anyway. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Team Pizza Place. It's my channel. I do what I want. You get, your, you get your own recording software, and then you get to call the shots. How's that? I have audacity. I can literally do this. <laughs> With the literal audacity to do this. <laughs> Screw you, Sean. I'll go find my own gaming channel. I'm um, with Blackjack and hookers. <laughs> In fact, forget the game channel. Forget the Blackjack. Also, I noticed that my mood is not going down by training at home. This was yeah. probably the best decision we could have made is buying this gear. That's probably why it costs so much, because this is the optimal way of doing things. Hmm. Well, you say optimal, I say practical. Mm -hmm. No, wait, those are the same things. No, scratch that. You say <laughs> optimal, I say big fucking waste of time. And I wonder if it'll actually recover by the time we get back to the treadmill now. Like, if I start doing... Po this is the biggest test. Like, we've bought all of this gear so that I know... I can keep swapping between all of them in the order we just did. Treadmill, uh... What's the official uh, name for what you do when you're sitting on the bench? Well, bench bench warming? I I think. No, um, no, that's a sports term. I'm referring to like uh, when you're doing, when you're lifting the weight, you're pushing up the really big barbell. Oh, uh, spotting. No, no, that's pumping iron. No, no. Uh... Okay, I am going to <laughs> reach into your vast recesses of knowledge again. Yeah, I'm going to reach into my deep, vast recesses. Res I'm going to I'm going to Google it. <laughs> Sitting on the bench, official. Oh wait, I can't spell official. Oh, here we go. Official blast. Thwarted by dyslexia. <laughs> Curses. Illiteracy. My one weakness. <laughs> we get back That's... to the treadmill. Yes! It's working! We can finally raise all of our stats in an efficient manner. Yay! We can we can sweat to the oldies! <laughs> you know, I've actually got an interesting story about that. That was an ongoing joke in the TV production class I was in in high school. Ooh is uh, who could find a, cre a creative way to integrate... Um... Oh, what's his name? I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, who are you looking for? The the guy who did Sweat into the Oldies. Oh, uh... I should Colby. know this. Like, he's... He's inf infamous, even. Oh, it's, uh... Ri Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons, yes. I almost made uh, who... the mistake of calling him Gene Simmons. Richard Simmons, uh, who could integrate him into their videos and their promos next, and could do it even more fantastically than anyone else? 
Like, we just came up with this whole bit because we had access to green screens, even though they weren't that good. So what we did, the w the winning blow, the guy who finally took it that nobody could top, he just edited himself and one of his friends just in the video with everyone else in the most stereotypical, like, 80s workout clothes ever. <laughs> God, I wish I still had that clip. I'd put it on screen right now. Come on now. Let's sweat. <laughs> so good. It's so good. Oh. And the interesting thing is, you go back and actually watch that video unironically, which I had to do to try and figure out how to use it. I'll tell you my contribution to that whole competition between all of us is uh, just this little, like, maybe 10 second bit of uh, he was on the screen and it was just, ain't no mountain high enough. And then it cuts to static. <laughs> and we had this program back then that would allow you to, to give a mouth to an inanimate picture, like a non-moving one. And you could make it talk to people. Hi, I'm Richard. I'm 42 and I'm a, a man. <laughs> Let's sweat! <laughs> <laughs> I look back on that class fondly and not very fondly, honestly. It's uh, one of those things like, uh, I have really, really good memories on one hand, but on the other hand, I remember all the mistakes I made too. Like, I just did not fit in that class. It was not my scene. Like, everyone else was movies, I was video games. It, it was one of those things where I felt like, yeah, I have completely different principles and ideas than the rest of you, don't I? I actually went back to the school, like, uh, a year or two ago, to just to kind of catch up with the teacher that I used to have. Uh, I'm not... let's call him Mr... You know what, let's call him Mr. Simmons. <laughs> Just so that nobody gets looked up on the internet and harassed by the yahoos that are out there. Not saying any of them are in the audience right now. It's not that I can't trust you guys, it's that I can't trust anybody, but... Uh, enough backpedaling, have at you. <laughs> I'm not the only one who has stories to tell today, is the important thing, though. You were at a convention over the weekend, from what I hear. Yes, I was. You mind to- and from what I hear, you have some absolutely amazing stories to tell about the things that happened. Oh, where do I begin? So... Okay, so... Starting with... Let's start with... One of my favorite webcomic artists, Crazy Crow, was there in the artist alley. He was selling, you know, hard covers of the webcomics. As well as providing autographs and uh, the what, what comments does he do again, just so everybody knows? Oh, sorry. Crazy Crowd, the artist for Spinneret. She's one of the few superheroes I can think of that's actually residing in Cleveland, Ohio. And it's also kind of funny, because um, I looked up this comic because I had no idea what it was. And I'm, I'm looking at the character list that are names like Super Milf. And yeah. Robo made, and I'm like, yes, yes, I, I love everything about this. I want to read this now. Oh, one of my favorites is Tiger, or as everyone keeps mistakenly call him, Black Tiger. <laughs> it's like, hey, Black Tiger, it's just Tiger. I'm not a black superhero. I'm a superhero who happens to be black. <laughs> <laughs> He's the. S <laughs> I almost made. Uh I was gonna say he's like the blank of webcomics then. I almost called out another YouTuber, but I'm like, eh, nope, nope, I don't want to ruffle any feathers right now. Oh no, Black Tiger. See, even I do it. Tiger is fantastic. But my favorite character, of course, is Mecha Maid. Yeah. <laughs> Who uh, wants to be, interestingly enough, wants to be in a lesbian relationship with the main character, Spinneret. I know, it's like, well, let's see, from what I've read... <laughs> This has been arrest just looking at herself in the mirror going, wait, she wants to date me, but I thought we were just friends. Well, I mean, if I, if I saw this body, I'd want to date that too. <laughs> and I just, and all I can do is just nod my head and then just think to myself, mm, nice. But uh, I, I think I just worked myself into a corner here in the game. Oops. I ran out of food. 
Oh, well, you, you can fix that. You, your shoes, they're made of leather. Eat them. <laughs> no, I asked Mick for a meal. Whoops, oh, uh, screwed oh. up a little bit there. Let's go make some money so that I don't have to embarrass myself there again. <laughs> Big fights today. Finally, after everything we've done, we can finally bring ourselves to do an actual fight in this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, where was I? Okay, so I went to talk to Crazy Crow. Uh-huh, sorry, I keep interrupting you. Oh, no, you're good. Everyone does it. But, <laughs> well, I, I walked up to him and said... We're going to buy some food now. I'm going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, I walked up to him and said, We are huge fans of you. We love you. We're doing webcomic as well. We, we're having a good time here. We, do, we love your stuff. And, um, uh... Yeah, uh, can I purchase a webcomic? Sure, he said. And then I was like, yay! Sweating, of course. A very cold sweat. Glacial, if you will. And then I say to myself, oh my god, I just embarrassed myself in front of Crazy Crow. He'll never want to speak to me again or look at our webcomic. He's going to think we're idiots because I'm an idiot. So I took so I bought Except the Except for the fact that... <laughs> Hold on, no, it continues. I walk away with my tail tucked between my legs, and I think, oh, I just embarrassed myself. And then Seneca, uh, the producer's, the producer's fiancé, she went up to go purchase a comic as well, and she spoke to Crazy Crow. She actually had on hand some of my artwork, because people have internet phones. You can pull up the internet. Mm -hmm. So, with that, she showed the, the, the Gwen poster I made for, for our comic. Which is still being produced, by the way. We're just going through a lot of rewrites. But continuing on, she showed Crazy Crowd the pit poster. He he looked at it. At first, I'm going to describe how she described him. He looked. His eyes looked glazed over because, as a you know, an artist, he gets a lot of fan work and you know thinks, oh, this is going to be another like little bobbleheaded chibi or just something that they slap together or whatever. But no, no. He takes Seneca's phone. Holds it closely. His eyes widened. And he said, does the screen get brighter? She said, yes. He brightened the screen and was just floored by the poster I made. He loved it. He loved it. Describe what he liked about the design, because I thought this was really cool. What? Oh, yeah, so did I. So Crazy Crow, he loved Gwen's design. Because he said this is one of the most unique female character designs he's ever seen. Because it was A, not too slutty, quote unquote, I'm going to quote him, quote unquote, not too slutty, tight, revealing, or too modest to the point where she might be a nun. It was a, it's, it was pretty much a perfect balance in his eyes of tight and flowing that he said made the, gave the character a very unique feel. And he loved the color scheming on it. He wondered what her name was. Seneca, Seneca, of course, responded, it's Gwen, or the White Ghost. And he, he was so delighted that Seneca, still being professional, just tried to, you know, close, you know, close the conversation, bought a, purchased a comic book, but in his delight, he gave her an autographed copy of the comic and said that the worst thing we can do with our comic is to not make it is to not write it and to be like the myriad of of artists who have something fantastic but never get around to making it he said that's one of the saddest things he can ever see is that when someone has a great idea that no one you know that no one ever makes their ideas and i super agree so the fact that he loves our work loves the art that was made by me after I made a loon out of myself in front of him absolutely delighted me. So what you're saying is, Senpai noticed you. Senpai noticed me! <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy for you, man. And when Ednick taught, told me that, or Hidden in the Truth, for those of you who have been watching us for a while, if, when he told me that, it was such a justifying moment. It's like, yes, there is value to being different. 
<laughs> there is value in breaking the mold. I'm not just being a loony over here. It makes sense. Because he's right. When you see the exact same designs over and over and over again, it's just so refreshing to see something that's different, that breaks the mold. And what you know, if you want to be an industry leader, you got to actually lead, not follow in other people's footsteps. What makes, what vindicates this even more was the night before, the, Hidden in the Truth and I and Seneca and Tuna and K Ray, we had attended, we went to, we went to a panel with Crazy Crow in there about making web comics. The funny part is we, we didn't know if we were going to go because we were just sitting in the hotel room, just kind of chilling, relaxing, having a good time with each other. And then I looked at the schedule and I said, well, we were going to go to this web comic panel. And they're like, well, we may or may not go. Uh, what's in it? So I looked it up. And I said, let's see, veteran comic book artist, crazy crowd. And immediately, we all stood to attention and said, let's go. And from there, we went there, you know, we, him and various other artists who I'm Hang on a second. We have to make a really important choice before you continue this. I heard somebody actually make a comment about this. There are three fighting styles in this game. There's the way yeah. of the bear, there's the way of the tiger, and the way of the turtle. And I responded, I'm not quite sure what that means at this point in the recording, but if I had to choose just one, knowing what I know about 80s cartoons, we're going to go the way of the turtle. <laughs> turtle up. Yeah. If I remember anything about Yu-Gi-Oh cards, is that Cannonpult, Catapult Turtle is one of the most bizarrely broken cards because the defense is just so high. <laughs> Fighting is fun. Remember that. <laughs> Anyways, please continue. Oh, yes. So, we went to the webcomic panel and, and Crazy Crow and many other artists who I'm sad I can't remember their names, they were talking about, you know... It's hard to be different because ev everything has been done before. Mm -hmm. But what you can do most is to do something the way you see it, the way you want to make it, make the thing that you would love to see. The way I view it, there's actually a game I've got on my hard drive right now. It's, uh, mm -hmm. if I could, let's see if I can find this thing while the game just kind of runs itself in the background. Uh, it's called Genitos. Somebody actually pointed this out to me on the Ask FM page, and it is essentially what we're going with space with for Space Shift. It's a it's a shoot 'em up that addresses all kinds of different eras of video games, but it's not the way I envisioned that kind of thing. It's cool, don't get me wrong. It's a really great game, but I see it more as a challenge than anything else. I look at this game and I go, okay, I see where you were going with that. Let's see if I can do that better. Ooh. Let's see if I can take the ideas that were here and put my own spin on them. Let's see if I can stretch the, the idea even farther than this guy did. Maybe make something even grander. Exactly. Um, like, let's take a look. Like, here's a brief example. Let's take a look at The Simpsons, Family Guy, King of the Hill. They are all essentially the same sitcom. See, Let's that time we beat you to a joke. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> One of the best lines in Family Guy. <laughs> it's like they're essentially the same sitcom. Uh, overweight husband, attractive wife, nuclear family, neighbors, and suburbs. And scene. However, they are all so different in how they present themselves. The Simpsons is every every sitcom parody and I, the Simpsons is every sitcom plot from the 50s and onward just taken to the 11th level. Like, say, they meet a celebrity in one episode. Well, in The Simpsons, they meet freaking Mel Gibson and have him make a movie with them. <laughs> and they take advantage of animation and get to make the jokes more hilarious. Mm -hmm. In Family Guy, they just go full nutball. They just remove the limiter and just have the characters do God knows what. <laughs> In the early episodes, you can definitely yeah, it's, see that... It's Go always on. cheaper to make Homer fall out of a tree than it is to make a real person fall out of a tree. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> He's not going to ask for hazard pay, or a stunt double for that matter. You can have Homer fall down the Grand Canyon. It, like, what's it going to What's it gonna hurt? He's going to get back up the next episode. <laughs> don't! 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 I still remember that Treehouse of Horror episode, but anyways, please continue. Oh, continuing on. And then you got King of the Hill, 
which does its spin on the on the sitcom that most sitcoms are you know, based on regular everyday scenarios. The King of the Hill does it in a way that's they are so everyday scenarios that each episode can be summed up as something someone does on their weekend. In this episode, the the gang goes to Mexico to buy beer. In this episode, the gang the the gang goes to a to a cove for fishing. In this episode, Hank buys a truck. It, they're very such they're such mundane, but it's the characters and the relationship with each other, something you definitely see in real life that makes it really come together. But again, these are all the same sitcom, but so different in their approach that it's like, yeah, sure, you can say they copied off each other, quote unquote, but they're so unique and original in their in their take on this subject that they stand out all the more in the annuals of cartoon history, which comes back to, yeah, it's hard to be different, but if you do something in a way only you can do it, then boom, you've got your you've got your originality, which we all just took to heart. Like, uh, we were all just sitting there looking, nodding, taking notes. There were were points where they were talking about the amount of work that goes into comics, how much work you got to put in, how much effort you got to be willing to do, how much time you're willing to sacrifice. And, and, and in the truth, and I just looked at each other, pulled our collars going, ugh. (laughs) We already knew this. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're like, oh, I, my mind flashed back to to the nights we just have staying up working on stuff, and then to realize, oh, we only scratched the surface. Mm-hmm. And we think, hey, you know, I mean, that's another thing. It's, you know, it's one of the reasons why I'm trying to either learn to work faster or work smarter, because this takes time. Everything we're doing here takes time. Yeah. So. There, and there will be nights, like here's a little transparency for how Draw Man works. There will be nights where I have a project. And I work fiercely into the night, but currently I'm on a very diurnal schedule. I gotta Come on, we just got to punch him one more time. Yes! All right. Exactly. Sorry. Exactly. No, you're good. You're good. That's actually very much it. would be like, I just got to get one more line in. And boom, this is now a fourth of the way done. I can now <laughs> go to sleep. Oh, the yeah, there'll be nights where, you know, I try to get something done, or at least I set out to get it done, but I forget, I, I want to make this good, and good takes time. And, you know, you I mean, you've had those nights, right, Fanu, where you're making something and you think, okay, if I just blast through the night, this will get done. Oh, yeah, that's the only time I get shit done, are you kidding me? Is at oh, yeah. night, because nobody asks me to do anything for them. Exactly. And you have the advantage that you don't have to go to, go to a day job. <laughs> so you can just blast through the night. Yeah, for those of you wondering, this is my job, pretty much. Like, I I have nothing else. I am not going back to retail. No way, no how. I, I'm not returning to that. And I'm you just don't not. So he has much more emphasis to get things done. Oh, yeah. And again, and for me... And many others on our team, we unfortunately have to be diurnal, have to stay on a day schedule. And because of that, we sometimes cannot do things at night because by the time we get home, we're exhausted. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't stop us from trying. We, get, we do do stuff. The point is, it'll be like, all right, cool. I'm home. I got an hour or two to kill. I can do something. I only got a dot done. <laughs> oh, crap. And I got to get up for work. <laughs> it's like why won't life let me do the things i want to do exactly but and that's just many of the things that were just flashing through my mind and everyone else's minds like yes we're trying we're trying so hard <laughs> uh, it just makes it all the more satisfying when you do finally get a little moment of gratification like that like, oh this goodness. guy you really respect saying, yeah, you know what? You're doing the right thing here. When he crazy crow, when I heard crazy crow compliment at my work, there was nothing that could bring me down for just two whole days straight. Of course, nothing. Of course, you do have one other convention story to tell. 
<laughs> oh, but un- yes! But unfortunately, we're out of time on this episode. We've been recording for quite a little while here. So, next time on minutes. Team Pizza Plays, would you like to hear the craziest thing that I've ever heard happen at a convention, and also the most uncomfortable at the same time? Tune in next time to Team Pizza Plays Punch Club. Until then, I'm What the Fnew. It's gonna be great. <laughs> and we'll see you again next time. Later, everybody. Yeah.